You are watching Econoom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In today's episode, chapter 4, measuring the performance of the economy. This is part 1 of 4 and we will be looking at measuring the GDP. When economists measure the performance of the economy, there are four macro measures that are used to determine how the economy is doing. Economic growth, employment, price levels and the balance of payments. Typically, we would like economic growth rates to be high, employment levels to be high, in other words, unemployment to be very low. Price levels should be stable, that means low and stable rates of inflation. And finally, the balance of payments position needs to be sustainable. It's also important that the distribution of income is not too unequal. Otherwise, it also would have an impact on social stability, investment and economic growth. So how is the South African economy doing? We will discuss this in class. If we want to consider economic growth as an objective, we first need to talk about measuring the levels of economic activity. Economic activity is about the production of goods and services, but how do we determine the value of those? Economic activity is typically measured in terms of the gross domestic product. The GDP is the total value of all final goods and services produced within the borders of the country during a specific period, usually a year. In this case, value means that we consider quantities multiplied with prices. Also, final means that it's only final goods and services that are part of this calculation. Otherwise, there would be double counting of value when you calculate the GDP. There are three ways to calculate the value of the GDP. The production method, spending method, and income method. In the case of the production method, we calculate the value added in each step of the production process. This avoids double counting, and intermediary goods and services are excluded. They are not added to this calculation. With the spending method, we only count the spending on final goods and services, and that gives us the value of GDP. For the income method, we calculate the incomes earned by the different factors of production, in other words, wages, interest, rent, and profits, in each stage of the production process. Keep in mind that in a closed circular flow, the value of production, incomes earned by the factors of production, and spending should always be equal. Now in our example we have a farmer that produces bushels of wheat. He doesn't use any intermediary inputs but he does use the other factors of production. As you can see down here his operating cost for employing labor, capital, natural resources and entrepreneurship. He sells his bushels of wheat to the miller for 10,000 rands. The miller then takes the wheat and produces flour. For the miller, the wheat is an intermediary input, but then he also employs factors of production which makes up the operating cost. He sells the flour onto the baker for 12,500 rands. The baker then buys the flour and bakes bread. She sells 7,200 loaves of bread to the shop owner for a total of 18,000 rands. So in her case, the intermediary input was the flour, and she also uses different factors of production to produce the bread. Finally, there's the shop owner who buys the bread from the baker. So the cost of the bread is the intermediary cost, and sells it on to the households, the final consumers, for 21,000 rands in total. The shop owner as well employs factors of production and has to pay wages, rent, interest and profit. So one possibility for calculating the value of the GDP is to measure the value added in each step of the production process. The farmer starts from scratch and has no intermediary cost. He uses the different factors of production up to a cost of 10,000 rands and then sells that on to the miller. So the farmer adds value of 10,000 rands to the production process. The miller turns the wheat into flour, 
and then sells this on to the baker for 12,500. So for the miller, the intermediary input was the wheat at 10,000 rands. And he sells off the flour at 12,500, which means that 2,500 2, rands worth of value was added in this step of the production process. In a similar fashion, the baker then takes the flour, bakes the bread, and sells it on to the shop owner. For the baker, the intermediary input was the flour of 12,500. And she sells the bread for a total of 18,000. Thus, in this part of the process, value of 5,500 rands was added. Finally, the shop owner gets the bread as intermediary input and sells it to the households for a total of 21,000 rands, adding 3,000 rands of value to this step of the production process. The value of the GDP in total is 10,000 plus 2,500 plus 5,500 plus the 3,000 adding up to 21,000 rands. The alternative approach is to look at the incomes earned by the factors of production in the different steps of the production process. So in this case, it's not value added, but factor incomes that are put together. In the case of the farmer who produces the wheat, he pays wages, rent, interest and profit to the value of 10,000 rands, which you'll remember is also the value added in this step of the production process. Now this is similar for the other steps of the process. The miller produces the flowers, also paying for labor, capital, resources and entrepreneurship with a total payment to the factors of production of 2,500 rands. In the same way, the baker pays 5,500 and the shop owner 3,000 rands to the different factors of production used in that step in the production process. This all adds up to a total of 21,000 rands. The third approach is the consumption method, which values the GDP as the total value of all the final goods and services. So it's only about final consumers, those households and individuals that consume the goods and services. In this case, you have to look at where the shop owner sells the bread onto the households for a total of 21,000 rands. That is also the value of the GDP according to this method of calculation. A comparison of the three methods shows the following. If you're using the production method, it's all about the value added in the different steps of the production process. You have to identify the intermediary input and the final selling price of that step of the production process. So the farmer has no intermediary cost and he adds value of 10,000. That gets sold on to the miller with an intermediary input cost of 10,000. He sells the wheat for 12,500, adding 2,500 worth of value in that step of the production process. The same holds for the baker and the shop owner. The flip side of this coin is the income method. In this case, you look at the income received by the different factors of production in the steps of the production process. So, the farmer has no intermediary inputs, but uses labor, capital, natural resources, and has to make a profit. And that adds up to factor incomes of 10,000 Rand in this first step of the production process, which is very similar exactly the same actually as the value added in that step of the process. The miller buys the wheat as an intermediary input but uses the different factors of production to process it into flour. The payments to the factors of production adds up to 2,500 Rand which again is the same as the value added in that step of the production process. Similarly, the baker pays the different factors of production the shop owner also pays wages, rent, interest and profit. All these also add up to the value of GDP. In the third instance, you can only look at the value of the final goods and services. Here, that makes for 21,000 rands 
at which the baker sold the bread to the different households in your story. Remember, in a closed circular flow, the production, income and spending methods should yield the same answer. So did we achieve the outcomes of this section? Can you define the GDP? And can you apply the three methods of calculating the value of GDP and do the calculations? Also have a look at Chapter 4 in Moor and Furi. There are more resources available on your fundi and you can answer the quiz questions. Follow at Econoom on Twitter.